This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Vinny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to this week's edition of Paradise, Louisiana. I'm Gary Rusponi. Here we are again, Segan Lane. Superior bait and tackle, and we got a very special guest today. My name is David DeLucci. I'm a former Major League Baseball player, avid outdoorsman, Baton Rouge, Louisiana resident. And I've got the same initials as this guy, DD. I'm Don Dubuque, and we got a busy show for you this morning. We're going to be covering a lot of things. Gary, you had a great fishing trip we're going to talk we about. We did. We're at Toe Field again. Now they know that. Bourgeois Charters. Uh, we had some Major League Baseball players with us. And we had him and his agents. We had we, we had three boats out there, and uh, they put me on the best boat. We won. See, he, did, he tried <laughs> to get away from me. That's a long story. But we'll right, well, we're going to get to that trip. We also uh, we're going to bring you some CCA. Uh, information, particularly uh, on that new reef that was constructed. Uh, it's called the uh, Vincent Mathern Reef, uh, located in uh, the Lake Pontchartrain area. A great job there. Chris Lecoq and I were there. Also, the big Star Awards banquet took place. Well, All the was, winners claimed their prizes over there. the summer. Big long crowd, long. large crowd, a lot of winners. It was fun. It was great food, too. I always, always got to check on that food, David, just like we were at Tokyo. I can tell. How was that food at Tokyo? <laughs> we, we don't know. You ate most of it, but you went straight to the dessert. You didn't eat the fish. Oh, come on, believe that. You don't tell them all that stuff. You don't believe that. But, you know, we got we got the fishing trip, and uh, David also got some, uh, he'd been scouting deer. He'd been hunting up in the north part of the this, this state, or the central part of the state, excuse me, he hunts over there along the river and the East Feliciana. You got a bunch of places that you hunt. He, he's, got, he's got one special deer he's doing, and, and he's going to show us some pictures of the ones he killed last year. So, David, you need to stay tuned with us. And, Don, you recuperating or what you got for us besides the the, the, the reef? Oh, I ain't letting them stop me. We're going to be out there. Don't worry about that. Got a good fishing trip planned this week. And speaking about that, you know, we got a change in the weather, guys. I mean, a nice little change this week. It's going to be lowering the temperatures, and humidity is going to be low, and it's great to get out there and do some hunting. So we'll get you some hunting information for the reports. Also, some fishing reports brought to you by Berkeley and Abu Garcia and an events calendar. That's all we got. Ain't that enough? That's enough. Now stay with us. We're right here at Segan Lane Superior Bait and Tackle, and you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, family, and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana, and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us. Whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. We have a special guest with us today, David DeLucci. David, for people that may not be baseball fans, tell us about your career. Well, I, I, I started at Catholic High here in Baton Rouge and, and um, went to college at a school up in North Mississippi. We don't have to go there, but signed out of college with the Baltimore Orioles. I played 13 years in the major leagues, appeared in two World Series, winning one with the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
and losing uh, when I was with the New York Yankees. It's hard for me to sit here <laughs> next to you in that Astros hat considering what they did to my Yankees. But uh, played thir 13 years, very fortunate. I'm a homeboy, can't leave Baton Rouge, so I reside here in, in Baton Rouge and uh, just loving life. Well, before we get to your outdoor activities, there's one last question with baseball. Astros or Dodgers? I tell you, it's hard to, hard to root against two LSU guys, Alex Bredman and, and Will Harris. You know, I'm pulling for those guys, but the Dodgers have been absolutely on fire. They're swinging the bats really well. The Astros bullpen is a little beat up, mm -hmm. but um, if I had to pick one, it'd have to be the Dodgers. All right, should be interesting. David, uh, you've got uh, an event coming up that you kind of put together. You do a lot of charity work. Uh, tell us about that. I do. I appreciate y'all having me on here to talk about it. Uh, I, I'm in partnership. My foundation, the David DeLucci Foundation, is partnering with the Caliph, Capital Area Law Enforcement Foundation. Uh, what I wanted to do was put on an archery competition. I, I felt that, uh, you know, Baton Rouge is, is in a, an interesting time. We want to back our, our blue. We want to do all we can for our law enforcement. And this archery competition is an opportunity to raise money to buy bulletproof vests, protective gear for our law enforcement. Considering what just happened in Las Vegas, I don't want there to be a, a, a second of doubt whether our law enforcement can rush in and save lives down here. Unfortunately, a lot of them are using gear from the 80s. Some of them don't even have gear. So this is an opportunity for the avid outdoorsman, the archer, to qualify at one of three locations or any three locations, Bowie Outfitters, Spillway Sportsman, or Gotham Archery, qualify for the finals. And also we're going to put some teams together. Each law enforcement department is going to compete against each other in an archery competition. So it's a way for the outdoorsman to support our law enforcement. And the main event will be February 3rd at the East Baton Rouge Parish shooting range. Qualifying starts next week, so we'd love to have you come out. All proceeds go to Caliph and buy protective gear. And this is going to be a typical 3D shoot? It's going to be a little bit of everything. We've got, uh, you know, we're going to put my own twist on it, but uh, predominantly it's going to be your, your typical archery competition. There will be some 3D action in there. We're going to... Uh, appeal to the competitive shooter and there'll be an outdoor shooter now nowadays archery is not real primitive anymore right oh, so man. the competitive guys compete with their own and the archers that are used to going to the outdoors no magnification no long stabilizers they'll compete on their own too well look but let's talk a little bit of hunting before we go any of the other outdoor activities tell us what you've been seeing right now and and you had two beautiful kills last year you know Tell us about your history bow hunt. Yeah, I, I love to bow hunt, and, uh, and I, I, I tell everybody I'm not a killer, I'm a manager. I like to grow big deer. I like to give them birthdays. I like to see how big that they can grow and how old they can be. And, and so I'm very particular in managing my herd and only taking out deer. We try to get them to be six and a half years old. And that's very difficult today, but if you can get your neighbors on board, it, it, the, the success in, in what you produce is incredible. Our genetics down here are great. We got a lot of food, and uh, you just got to give the deer more birthdays. That's the bottom line. Last year, I was able to kill a 162-inch buck and a 158-inch buck on my place, and every year we produce a deer in the 160-inch range because we let them grow big. Uh, right now, with this cool snap, I believe this week is it, the activity is going to be incredible. This is an opportunity that deer are feeding on, on mass. They're eating acorns, they're eating pecans. They're trying to get fat for the winter. Hopefully we'll have a cool winter. So this is the week right here. If there was ever a time to be in the woods, this is going to be it. David, you were telling us you got a big boy picked out that you're going to be hunting this year. That has happened to me twice in my life. There was a deer, an individual deer that I targeted, and it happened on a turkey. And I tell you, it almost ruined my season because everything else went out the window, and I wasn't successful on either one. Does that happen often to you to pick out a particular animal and hunt it? It does. I mean, there's a lot of factors that come into play, but, but, but I am so particular in how I go about the methods I use. I will, at times, I will not hunt the hottest spot because of the wind. I'll completely shut down a part of my property if the wind is not right. My best stand, I was only able to hunt one time last year. And oftentimes guys will see with the new trail cameras, they'll get on a deer mm -hmm. that they'll just go right after. And, and they don't think about the wind, they don't think about timing. 
and oftentimes they'll spook that deer out. So what I like to do is I like to let him feel comfortable. We won't go after that deer until it's absolutely perfect. And when it all comes together, when that plan comes together, it's well worth the sacrifices you make. Uh, maybe that's some of the that patience you learned in baseball. <laughs> yeah. I was a first pitch hitter, so I didn't have a whole lot when I was playing. We're going we're gonna to go to a break pretty soon, and we're going to come back with about fishing. But I got one question to ask you, you and Don talking. I know Don came up hunting and fishing. I come up hunting and fishing, and I lived in the city, but my daddy had hunting dogs. We had red squirrel dogs, rabbit dogs. So I came up doing that. I never was much of a big deer hunter. Make too much noise for one thing. And I, I wasn't willing to do all the work you're doing. But you were raised in a city kid. Who you attribute your, your love for the outdoors, especially bow hunting? Who you attribute that to? Well, I, my love for the outdoors, uh, I, I have to give it to my grandfather, Carlo Polito, was just an avid outdoorsman. Spent a lot of time with your dad in the outdoors. Uh, I did too, growing up rabbit hunting with those guys. Uh, my dad, Mike, was a big outdoorsman, big deer hunter. My grandfather was loving duck hunting. My dad was loving deer hunting, so I could do a, a mixture of both. But I think it was just the introductory at an early age and the time that I spent with your dad and my grandfather and, and Louis D. John and just going out there and appreciating everything. We hunted everything, we ate everything, and now I have a finer appreciation of what Sportsman Paradise has for the residents here in Louisiana. Where did your first deer come from? My first and deer where? came from St. Francisville. I was, uh, I was six years old. Uh, we had a lease in St. Francisville uh, right off of Solitude, and, and I did uh, a lot of hunting in, in uh, Louisiana and Woodville, Mississippi. Um, uh, spent a lot of time. The beauty of baseball is the season ends right before deer <laughs> season and duck season. And really when the fishing gets best is right around World Series time. So I could do both. I could play baseball and hunt and fish. Not so good for turkey hunters though. No, I didn't get turkey <laughs> hunt until after my career. And I remember, you know, I get these tales about you being a better running back. He went to St. Louis when he was little, St. Louis King of France. Mm -hmm. And my buddy Wayne DeQuan coached him. He's a pretty good running back and football player too. I don't know why they made you leave. As, uh, you that was my first love. High school to Catholic. Huh? I did, I did. I got recruited as a football player. My first love was football, and uh, I chose baseball in hopes that uh, there wouldn't be any injuries and the longevity of the career would go on. I never broke a bone, never got injured in football, mm. and I've had six surgeries in baseball and broken <laughs> just about everything. Yeah, so. Non-contact sport. That's right? right. Well, look, we had a good fishing trip the other day, and you set it up. Tell us about this fishing trip when we come back. Where we going? We was at Toe Fields, and we was by Charters, and uh, you and your dad sort of set this up. We had three boats. Tell us a little bit how you set it up. Yeah, so uh, I, I was represented by an agent from Beverly Hills, Paragon Sports, and um, he represented me throughout my baseball career. Now he is representing Austin and Aaron Nola, and uh, he comes in to visit his players at least once every offseason. And uh, we were talking, and, and I said, look, let's just do something different. Instead of just flying in, going out to dinner to meet with these guys, let's take them on a trip. Since you guys are from Beverly Hills, let, let's get you out in the marsh and get you out in, in what Louisiana has to offer. And they agreed to it, and they were excited. So we went down to Tofield Bourgeois, and uh, it was the, the best trip you could ask for. It was a cool front that came in and kind of shut the fishing down. But when you bring guys in from California that's never seen an alligator in the wild and never seen the sunrise on the marsh, they didn't have to catch any fish. But we did, and it would have been a great trip for them. All right, and we'll show you some of that action when we come back. Right after this, you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Pod's moving in storage. I need to clean out my study. We'll deliver a container. My brother-in-law's moving in. Maybe he'll help you pack. He's lazy. We can refer some professionals. It's just until he finds work. We can keep things at our storage center for as long as it takes. I am not happy about this. Or you can keep your things on site for quick unloading. Did you say freeloading? I said unloading. I heard freeloading. I'm sure you did. Store on site or let us drive your things to our secure storage center. Pod's moving in storage solved. Watching Paradise, Louisiana. 
Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Oh, Joe Longo from Los Angeles. Garrett Parcell from California. The football player. David DeLucci from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Bud plays on from Lafitte. Taking these Cali boys fishing for their first time south Louisiana. Stay tuned, Paradise, Louisiana. AJ Nola, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Taylor Talamar, Rural, Louisiana. Aaron Nola, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Austin Nola, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. been fishing all my life since since I was probably uh, 14 13 years old uh, and then when the boys were born we had a camp out in Toledo Bend Louisiana for 15 years and uh, did a lot of bass fishing uh, fish down this way a lot uh, back in the uh, the 80s and 90s a uh, lot a of, lot of saltwater fishing over here and then then we got into bass fishing with the boys. Uh, they grew up on Toledo Bend. And uh, back when they were 13, 14 years old, they, uh, they wasn't interested in fishing. Back then, they, we'd get to the camp, and all they want to do is throw the baseball in the backyard by the lake. And uh, we ended up uh, selling the camp. 15 years later because of baseball was their top priority. And, uh, still wish we had the camp because uh, now they become excellent fishermen, better, better fishermen than I, I am. So. I want to know what's tougher. Tough day on the mound or a tough day on the water? <laughs> Best memories at LSU would be the 2009 National Championship team, the, the run we made at it against Texas. I've never been a big Texas fan. It was good to beat those, uh, those Longhorn guys. Good. That's felt good. Hey, AJ, I was trying to get something out of your son. Talking about the hot spots of his year with the Phillies. He was too honest. He didn't want to take too much. You want to ask that question? What are the two best games he had this year? Two best games he had this year. Well, he had he had several good games, but the one against the Astros, where he had a career 12 strikeouts, was an excellent game for him. Um, and then the Los Angeles Dodgers, he had, uh, he had 10 strikeouts and uh, another excellent game. So that was two memorable wins for him uh, with the Phillies. And hopefully that'll carry over to next year with him.
just got back to the dock of a wonderful fishing trip. Let me explain to you what we're doing here. I've got something extremely unique. We've got three Catholic High Major League Baseball players. What's made this so important and so impressive is the fact that a former Major League Baseball player, current Major League Baseball player, and knocking on the door about to be another Major League Baseball player. We got Aaron Nola, Austin Nola, and our super agents. You hear agents, show me the money. These guys say, show me the fish. All the way from Beverly Hills, California, Joe Longo and Garrett Parcell, our super agents represent me when I was playing and now currently Aaron and Austin from Paragon Sports. A lot of agents wine and dine their players. These guys come down here, get down and dirty and get on a fishing trip with us. It has been absolutely outstanding. The wind brought up, kicked up a little bit, had a cool front. But I tell you, one of the things that, that I did on purpose was you, Gary Rasponi was supposed to come in our boat and video us, and we, we left him. We got, we got as far away, because he's got that reputation of having a black cloud over him. We wanted to catch fish. So we got out of there, we left him, and uh, we ended up catching fish. But to these guys that made this trip, it's been absolutely amazing. Boozewise Fishing Charters have, have really treated us like royalty. The food was great, the guides were great, the fishing was super. We got repeat customers, man. Got guys coming from California. They'll be here again next year. Yeah, well, I have to vouch for Mr. Gary. I have to say that uh, the black cloud was lifted today. I mean, it, it worked out for us. A little light shined on us late. And at the end of the day, Captain Talamo got us on some fish, and uh, we put a, quite a few specks in the boat. So I believe and I know for sure that I caught the most fish. I, I know that I caught the most fish. Okay. No, no, I believe I caught the most fish. I got proof, I got scars from catching all the fish. Look, look Gary, right here. Scarred up from catching all the fish. We want to thank Bourgeois Charters for this, uh, making this trip available, donating this trip to Sister Dulcie Mercedarian Foundation. The food here is five star. The fishing is great. We were blessed to be able to do this two years in a row. And we're gonna come back again and uh, thank everybody who uh, helped us out in making this trip. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. And you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Hi, I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. The perfect scenario every fisherman hopes for is have plenty of fish and have them congregate in the same spot. And that's what they hope to accomplish with projects like this one. Our volunteers come up with these ideas, Don. This, this particular project was the idea of our River Parishes chapter uh, right here in St. John Parish. About two years ago, they came to us with the idea that uh, it's been a while since we focused on the western portion of Lake Pontchartrain, which is a great place to fish, as many people know, but there's not much habitat, uh, bottom habitat for sure over here. So they came to us with this idea. They go to our habitat committee like, like any of our ideas do, and it, got, it went through the process. We went to St. John Parish, we went to the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, we got the site selected, uh, and it all led to where we are today, uh, actually building the reef itself. This reef is going to reestablish some of the hard substrate in this lake. And Lake Pontchartrain, as well as most of southern Louisiana, is predominantly a soft mud substrate. So um, having something that's hard there for critters to go attached to is really important. Um, you know, things like barnacles that sheep's head will then come and um, use their teeth to scrape off of the 
artificial reef material. Um, those are those are the kind of things that are going to set up very soon on after putting this material down. You know, Frenier and Peavine was already a hotspot for recreational and commercial uh, fishermen, and certainly we uh, welcome any way to improve the recreation and coastal parish of St. John Parish. Um, I think it's going to be great economically, and I think it's going to be great for not only the residents of St. John Parish, but the residents of River Parish, the River Parishes who utilize our boat launch. Oh, that, this this is phenomenal. I mean, the family is extremely happy, and we want to thank all the uh, partners that made this possible. Um, CCA's path to, to conserve our resources is definitely one that my, my father felt uh, in his actions and his passions. Uh, you know, being a being a good Cajun boy, born on a houseboat, owned by the Zalmans, he loved the water. Some of the best things were taking people that have never been out in South Louisiana and shared our phenomenal resources. There are a lot of benefits to this site. Um, you know, not only was it very close to the boat launch, it's exactly 1.3 miles from the Frenier Landing launch. But um, there was also a pre-existing shell pad there that was removed in the 80s. There was pretty much a foundation there to start from, which is always a benefit because, especially in the western part of the lake, the, the mud is very, very soft. So it kind of gives us a little bit of a leg up um, to start building onto that reef. Well, this is the sixth project we've completed just in Lake Pontchartrain, and the 22nd we've completed across the coast of Louisiana. We've got reefs everywhere from Black Bay to Calcasieu Lake, uh, but like I said, this is the sixth one in Lake Pontchartrain. Every one of them has been the result of, of our chapters working together with wildlife and fisheries and corporate partners to make them come to fruition. People pay for this when they support organizations like CCA. Uh, our Building Conservation Trust is our national habitat program that puts up half the money for this along with our partners from Shell Oil. And then the other half of the money in this particular case came from the Artificial Reef Trust Fund. You might remember a couple of years ago the public voted to protect the Artificial Reef Trust Fund from legislative sweeps. Uh, and so those dollars, now that they're protected, are available for projects like this. That's not tax dollars, by the way. Those are dollars through oil and gas. Uh, that come to projects like this. So this entire project was funded through CCA, our partners at Shell and the Building Conservation Trust, and the Artificial Reef Trust Fund. At a certain point, um, you've got to look at your resource and say, hey, I've, I've got to have this for the next generation and the next generation. And we were so elated that this reef can now be enjoyed by multiple generations to come. If you're going to be fishing Western Lake Pontchartrain in St. John Parish out of Frenier Landing, before you leave, make sure you put the GPS coordinates in for the Vincent Mathern Fishing Reef. And perhaps you maybe get a chance to go fish that reef next summer and place in the Star Awards category, which they just had their banquet. We've been talking about it for a while, and uh, you were there. It was a great event on the I'm there every year. Yeah. I don't want to miss it. Uh, by the way, walk-ons y'all did again. A great job. The food was delicious. That two kind of meat vegetables, everything, the lines went fast, but uh, the weather was perfect. You know, one mm -hmm. year it was so hot, mosquitoes and everything, and one time it was freezing cold and blowing through there. We had a little cool breeze, blew some of the signs down. Everything was beautiful, and we got to talk to some of the winners. There's no reason it shouldn't be bigger and better next year. So, here's some sights and scenes from the Star Banquet. 2017 awards banquet and a lot of the winners. We're here at Live Oak Arabians for the 23rd annual Star Banquet. Look around the room, we are giving away over $500,000 in prizes from the Star Tournament. People are starting to pour in and it's gonna be a great night. Had held the lead for about 83 days and then just waiting for the tournament to end. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at this boat online. I did a lot of homework on, on the tournament before I started fishing and I saw that most of the time in, in our division, Venice usually is where the bigger fish come from. So um, I ended up catching one that was 6'7", which is actually really small for our division every year. Lucky man right here, guys. First time he ever entered the tournament and he wins. Super excited. We, uh, we've known about this for about a month and a half, two months. We've been trying to keep it a secret from him. 
How, how'd that it's go? Been it's been tough. It's been tough. Over yeah. the yeah. moon. This little boy fishes almost every single day, and to see him win something like this for somebody who truly loves to fish and is such a little outdoorsman at only eight years old just makes my heart burst. I'm so happy. happy I'm so happy for him, and I love that it was a surprise. Oh, exactly. Join CCA and fish the star. I'm Jay Bryan from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I won this boat by catching a tag redfish in Venice, Louisiana. I caught my fish uh, pre-fishing for a Lafayette Kayak Fishing Club tournament. Caught it down in Elmer's, uh, just scouting. I saw a big trout hit, caught the cast in the topwater out at it, and uh, she took it. So. I caught my fish. Uh, in Big Lake, I caught it south of A-Bears. I was uh, fishing early. It's right after this tournament had started. I was dodging some rain, going to get up underneath a, uh, a pylon, a, a pier, and I said, oh, let me cast in there, and I made a cast, and I actually saw the fish hit it right by the boat, and it was 547, 549, something like that. Oh, no, top I, water? No, 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 uh, plastic. Plastic? Plastic, yeah. Uh, and I, uh, I had to watch the leaderboard all year, of course. Josh bumped me out after that little storm, but uh, it was great. It was great, you know. And I was actually with Ryan when he caught his fish. Wow! So, so, so a, a good camaraderie with the kayak fishermen, right? Well, we're all in the same Lafayette Kayak Fishing Club. All, all three of us right here. We all fish together all the time. So, our, our club had a real good show this year. Last year, I caught one, and I lost the last two weeks of the season of the tournament. I lost in August to another guy that was fishing by me. I had a five, one and a half, so. This year's different. This year's different, I win the boat. My name is Amelia and I'm from Abbeville. I won this boat. I'm so excited to have it and I can't wait to ride in it. hadn't been fishing much and the weather pushed me further east on uh, Marsh Island and I uh, fished a point, shrimp under a cork and it went under um, and flipped it in the boat. I actually didn't even know what I had until uh, my, my buddy said, I mean, he said, what is that? You know, it looked like a piece of weed or string sticking out and kind of scratched off some of the algae and it said CCA Star Tournament. So. Uh, <laughs> I don't, How'd you feel it, uh, really, at that point, I, I kind of didn't believe it because I had just purchased the ticket three hours prior, so it kind of, you know, it, it felt surreal for about a week. <laughs> um, the evening that I went fishing was a Friday evening. It looked like it was about a storm raining. My neighbor, Tony, he looked at me and said, man, you're crazy. You're about to leave out in this weather. And I said, sir, I have a tag fish to go catch. Uh, I sat out there for a while, and I was using dead shrimp fishing on bottom. And I caught a few fish. I Where were you at now? You, you forgot to say that. Now, I was only about a half mile down past my house. I just recently purchased a home in Lafitte in April of this year. And living on the water has given me the opportunity to fish as much as I want. So. Um, when I was catching this fish, I told the boat next to me uh, that I was after one particular fish. I was after one with the red tag. And so be it, I got down to my very last piece of shrimp. It wasn't a whole shrimp, it was a last piece of shrimp. I decided to put it on a popping cork, do something a little different. I threw it over some buoys, an obstruction. I had to throw it over a stainless steel cable on some buoys, and the cork went under, and there she was. I pulled her over them buoys, got her to the side of the boat, didn't realize it was red tagged until I got it in the Florida boat and then I went to shaking. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change has been keeping cars and trucks in Baton Rouge clean and running smooth for over 50 years. At Benny's, we feature professional car washing, complete detailing, high-tech waxing and buffing, interior cleaning, and tire shine. Benny's, one stop for car maintenance with complete oil and lube services and even state inspections at our express locations. Visit one of our five convenient locations, including our newest store on Greenwell Springs Road. And don't forget to stop by Be Quick Convenience Store and Fuel Stop. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Drive in dirty, drive out clean.
The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Welcome to the H&H &H Tournament Report, Gary. We got some results in from some of the events taking place. There's definitely tournaments. I was waiting on some more rodeos, but look like they're going to slow down in a little while unless we have some other big rodeos coming up. But uh, it, it did it again, okay? Somebody from South Louisiana going to the Bassmaster Classic. They had five of our guys went. Some of them had already been to the Bassmaster Classic, two of them. We got another one. Caleb Summerall, New Iberia. Three-day total of 36.12. He needs seven pounds, 10 ounces. Seven nine would be a tie. Seven ten is what he's looking for. Nine pounds, 13 ounces. Nine thirteen. Oh man. Today was, I questioned why we do this. I was the highest of highs and lowest of lows. I, uh, I lost so many fish today. And I think at one o'clock I was sitting on a pound and a quarter fish. And I told my marshal, I was like, if something's not right, I, I got to get a limit. I told myself this going into this morning that I wasn't going to fish for a big one without a limit. And I ran all the way up almost to the launch. And I uh, hit a couple spots, and it just wasn't happening. And it would follow my drive shot all the way down to the bottom, and I couldn't get him to eat. And I hit one more spot, and I called one up, and it was probably two, two and a quarter. And, uh, and they started schooling, and I had my limit, and then five, six cast. And I knew how big of a deal that was going to be. But I knew, I knew for anything, I, that, that would probably get me as close to the class as I could, as I could get. And that's what I do want to lose out on. I mean, we do this to make the classic, and I can't imagine how that's going to be. That was, that was the main goal going into the day was just make the classic. But if this thing pans out, hey, I don't even know what to say anymore, man. You're in the classic. You're in the classic. Another great showing and another guy from Louisiana going to the Bassmaster Classic. Well, what's uh, going to be interesting is a tournament that he just won. That's where the Bassmaster Classic will be held. So he's got to be looking pretty good right now. Oh, same, same way with uh, Mr. Ray, uh, Ryan Levine did. He did the same thing last year. It, it, it's just amazing to see what these kids are doing. Jamie Les did it once before. But they were showing me the report a while ago. Uh, I saw one that really outstanding. And one of the fishermen that fished that tournament's name was from Italy, Louisi Papa. Why don't you come down to Louisiana and come fish with me, Louisi? I'll tell you where they got some good food, good Cajun food, good Italian food. Come fish with your combate, <laughs> Louisi Papa. Don, uh, we had another, you know, Junior Bass Masters, you know, the Junior Southwest Bass Masters had a tournament at Rarons. And these young kids, by the way, you, they can pan to some of the older adult tournaments right now. They're coming in, they're fishing. They fished the last Saturday at a little coup front. They fished dry runs both sides. Most of the fish came from the Lake Barrette side. First place was Hanson Chaney again and the 15 to 18 year old group. Evan Matty was second and uh, Lance LeBron was third. Big Bass was Evan Matty. And 11 14 Trace Day. By the way, Trace fishes that started the stars. He came up, now he's bad fishing. He's been placing a lot of tournament. Trace 11 and 14. Trace day one at number two was Con Conrad or Connor, Connor Rushing. Number three was Garrett Thomas. The big fish was Brody Wilbert. Uh, and the seven to 10, uh, Horton Ryan, uh, Robinson, Caden Sellers was second, Evan Burris was, was third, and big fish was uh, Hayden Robinson. Uh, the elder division, Jimmy Sylvester, won that and the big fish. So that's the junior Southwest Bassmasters. You now know, coming up. I'm sure they're looking for the day when one of those junior Southwest Bassmaster members goes on and becomes a Bassmaster Classic competitor. There's no that's doubt gonna about it. That's going to be a lot it. of reward but there. You saw, what, you saw two or three years ago when the boys that 
out of Southwest and went up to the national tournament and won the national championship. The boys from Denham and won the national championship. The boys from Gonzales and them that came in second, they like to clean the board. And they didn't do quite as well last year, but they always make a showing. And uh, again, thanks to, to Jim and Cindy Bro for sending Absolutely. us them. Uh, Don, you got some kayak stuff coming up too, I know. It's real yeah. important. Right. This weekend, we've got the BCKFC, Bayou Coast Kayak Fishing Club's Trout Challenge. You can fish anywhere along Highway 23. The weigh-in is going to be at the Myrtle Grove Marina. They also have their 12th annual Fall and Tide Kayak Fishing Rodeo scheduled for November the 11th. I know that's opening day of duck season, but if you're into kayak fishing, you got a choice to make. Uh, it's going to be pretty much the same thing, uh, fishing all along Highway 23, but the way in for this one's going to be at Cypress Cove Marina. If you want to get signed up, that, more I'm information, go to their clear. website, bckfc.org. We've been invited, both of them. I heard both of them. Maybe we, maybe that opening day of duck season, I can go kill a blasting cast, come back and do the way in. Somebody invite me to do a blasting cast on the opening day. I'll be there. Uh, Don, that's it. I don't, I don't see any more other ones we okay. got. And tell people to be sure and send it three right. weeks in advance one more time. And if you send me pictures, I'm, you know, if you send me a fly, it's the best way to do it, too. You send it about three weeks in advance and remind me every Sunday. That's it. All right. We'll be right back with the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing and Hunting Report coming up on Paradise, Louisiana. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving in storage. Solved. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolo's.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. And Gary, we've got to start off with that hot tuna action that's going on outside of Venice. Uh, winds last week were up pretty high, but those who got out there got behind the shrimp boats, and those fish are up shallow and some really nice tuna coming in. What size are you talking about? 70, 80 pounds? That's a one Not even big. that big. You know, they're, they're kind of the smaller ones. Every right. now and then there's a big one that pops up. But, hey, if you're catching plenty of them, that'll keep and you And I've busy. heard they've seen some wahoo have been hanging around in different areas around there. Uh, Don, all my saltwater uh, fishing is coming from uh, the, the Delagro, mm -hmm. Lake Catherine. There's a whole thing coming from that area. Uh, Del Lagos, again, uh, Ronnie LaHosa and them was telling me. I, I fished this past week after I went to, to Lafitte. I, I went Thursday. We heard there was fish being caught in the Irish Bayou. We went there and we caught a few bass. I was with Harold and Ken Lambert. And we fished, we went fished a trussel just to mm -hmm. make sure they, if they we heard they show up, the water was beautiful, tide was a little strong, but uh, we, we didn't get a bite on that. But inside right now, the redfish and the bass, they were running a little small. I think we caught three or four bass. We fished it a little bit. I probably got a little video you can see of that. But uh, Ronnie and the host told me right now, getting a lot of reports from there. Somebody come in here today said, Lake Catherine, they were catching fish on plastic. They ain't been fishing shrimp. But if you want to fish shrimp, I still think it's the best thing to do to be safe. And they're running so big at Island Marina that when you get through, if they're still alive, you just put them in the freezer. And you can have your good shrimp ball or a good shrimp dinner. So if you don't need them, don't use them. But uh, they're there. You're right. Lake Catherine has been multiple good reports. Our friend Jerry Cross went there last week. Uh, he and a buddy used nothing but plastic, limited out on speckled trout, picked up 10 bass and a redfish. So, and it continues. Water's gorgeous right now in Lake the bass, The bass are all up and down the Cohagen Canal, the mm -hmm. Rigolese. My friends in there were there, people fishing kayaks 
in there been catching bass and redfish and speckled trout. Mike Devens said he's he going to get mad at me telling me that he gonna, people going to fish around his pier. But Mike, Mike caught 20. Just went out there the other mm -hmm. day. They caught 20. They caught 20 speckled trout off his pier. Well, I wait, and he's going to call me when them chicken pens start by hitting those live shrimp. So different baits. Uh, it, this is sort of a combination trip right now. Uh, the, let me, let me, I got on the wrong page, Johnny. Uh, a big lake. I'm going to go mm -hmm. all the way to the east. My, my brother, Johnny, and Jerry, and his wife, uh, Johnny's wife, Christy, they were there last week. Uh, they fished under the night. The tide had been so good, and all that wind and storm had brought some salt water in there. Uh, they were fishing. They caught almost a limited trout and a limited redfish under the lights off the pier, and they were using swim baits. They were using tsunami, you know, the basic tsunami colors, slow rolling, and uh, that's where they caught their fish. Uh, I got a, a good report from Delacro from Calvin Duvall. He made another trip over there, and they've been catching them. Uh, then I got a, a, a report from Delico, from Kenneth Fontenot and his family. Uh, he had Phil Broussard. Uh, they were fishing. I'm sorry. This ain't Delacro. This is Big Lake again. Kenneth Fontenot and his family were fishing Big Lake with Phil Broussard and the family. It's Kevin and them. They, were, they had Kelly Wickham him, and he had all his kids. They got, call them all Goo. They all of them got a nickname of Goo Fontenot. So, and he sent a great picture. They had a great trip. And uh, that, that come from Big Lake. Take a break, Turtle Bay. I didn't know where they want. This is my favorite story of last week. It happened to be cancer awareness month, mm -hmm. breast cancer awareness. Ever. Rachel Bozar, first cast in her new boat fishing in the feet area around Turtle Bay. She's out of Morero, her first cast, big red fish. Then she called drum, and then they fished in that area and caught fish all day. She said, God feels, she feels blessed. I feel blessed you send that. Your story was great. She's a cancer survivor. Keep it up. Keep sending those pictures. Rachel, congratulations and God bless you. Bourgeois. Paul Nicholas, Faubacher, Milton, Louisiana, and these guys right now are still catching fish at these, the private pond in Bourgeois, Georgia. I mean, Bourgeois Pine and Nicholas Faubacher and them in Milton, Louisiana. His sister Megan. And Sydney, they also, they still hammering them bass over there. And uh, he, he won't give us a secret. He don't tell us what he's biting on, you know. What is, he tells us what his pine is, but I, I guess it's private. But at least he can tell us the bait. So you got to remember that, Nick, because send us the bait next time. Uh, the feed again, I want to go back there. My friend, Mark Barker. He's been, he got a new camp over there. He's been fishing there. He's been using two different guys. He used Craig de Grease. I said his name wrong last week. And they've been going down there fishing. And last week, uh, he had Dr. David Carver and, and the family and Jerry Walters. And uh, they caught some beautiful trout and redfish in the feet. They were fishing with uh, Captain Scott Poche. So these are all these captains in the feet. Tofield has them, all of them mm -hmm. right now. They're catching fish. If you don't know where to go, Call them captains. Call them either either one of those uh, places that Bourgeois Charters, New Orleans Fishing dot com, and you go. Right now, the the, the fire planes have been back. Okay. By the way, the bottom line is they've been eating some beautiful crabs right now. The crabs are running number one, and uh, they got what's waiting on me next week when I go down to the feet. I, that's all I got, man. I got some fresh water, but you got anything else? Well, I just wanted to mention, you know, you talked about you went to the trestles off our poncha train uh, to check on the trout. Well, while you're going out and do that, there's been some good reports of redfish and some puppy drum out there, too. So make sure you bring some dead bait. If you're going to be looking for trout and it's not there, you can use that as a backup. I uh, also got some good report about uh, Yellow Cotton Bay. Uh, producing some good bull reds if you're into bull red fishing down there below Venice. And they're also catching some limits of speckled trout using a gulp and also some really nice top water action going on there too. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you some baits right now, but where we was fishing, the Wrigley and the L&M Bridge, by the way, they're they full of big red redfish right now. My neighbor, Marcus Lamb, over there at my camp, Slidell, they got a big fish. But the thing that gets me more excited than anything right now is the intercoastal now, Chris McAloose and them are going down there and finding that water. They're going in the marsh right off the intercoastal, and they're limiting out on bass. 
I mean, mm -hmm. beautiful bass, and he'd catch them on spinnerbait and on plastics. But uh, it makes me sick, and nobody wants to take me. I, I tried to find them in Irish Bayou the other day, but we had three or four little ones that just went in. Uh, I got some. I want to show you these baits. When we were fishing in the feet the other day, we were fishing dead shrimp, and we were catching those redfish, and we catch the speck every now and then. They were fishing under a cart. Then they were fishing it just straight line. A jig head, no plastic, nothing. All of a sudden, they get in the middle of the day, those guys will tell you, they put this right here. Sparkle beetle, the one they had the other day, had a fire tail. I know you can find them, I didn't see it here. This is clear with the fire tail. That's it. Under a jig, no cork, so rolling it, coming in. And also using a matrix shed, they're using a green hornet and the other couple of short truce colors, they're catching them on that. This right here has been the hottest bait, Grand Isle, right here. Mm -hmm. Off the bridges, off Highway 1, a glow shrimp. This one got sparkles in it, but this is the one everybody's sending me the report. The report came from uh, the people from, from uh, the, the Gulf states, uh, uh, furniture people. Look, here it is right there. Gulf, glow shrimp. By the way, Big Lake, the, spec, um, the flounder getting ready to turn mm -hmm. on, that's Captain Phil right and them, that's it, right there. So this one, any of the colors, and uh, that's it. Now we're getting ready to go fresh, I mean, fresh water. You ready? Uh, Sakala is, is what's going on there. Where are you catching them? Well, I'm not hurt? catching them. Where you I'm hurt? getting some good reports on some of the North Shore areas. I'm an upper river, starting to catch them there. And I'm sure down there by Bayou Black, that's got to be turned on right that, now. This little that, cool weather's going to really bring them out. That's the reports I'm getting. Lake Verrett, and they're big. They ain't catching the numbers. They're talking about slabs right now. Catching them on your favorite jig. Some people are using, uh, you know, crop black and short. Don't forget about that. They always put that little crop and on them right now. But uh, the guys I'm talking to are using the regular jigs under mm -hmm. cork or they tight lining the jig post up against the cypress, especially the cypress, you know, on the east side of, of Lake Barrette, where it comes out of Tacopal, they're fishing them under them trees where they got a lot of limbs in the water, right up under them. Straight lining with the jig pole. Then that's where I'm getting it from, big ones. Also, anywhere in the Barrette area, you know, up in north and Bay House Head and all them right now, that's where the Sacklay are coming from. I get some few reports. Uh, we got some friends, uh, Mr. Mark Burns over here, his brother went in the spillway, caught 12 or 14, but there's a rise in the spillway. Mm -hmm. Last week, last Sunday, I had a report bass coming from that area. They were coming from Grand Lake on a spinnerbait and a tequila sunrise worm, okay? Everybody, June bug, I, most everybody used to fish that tequila sunrise worm. Talked to somebody at Badrones last week, last Sunday, they caught those fish in, the, in Grand Lake and then Big Pigeon itself, catching that water moving, catching on them points, to keep the sunrise worm. Another one I, I'm getting reports from over there, the guy was coming here a while ago, was talking about Toledo Bend. Toledo Bend is where they're talking about when they were catching those fish at night. Now they're worried about the water is falling out right now. I think the normal stage is 172. They got it drawn down right now to 167, uh, mid lake. Joel Hedrick, who fishes there all the time, was there last week. He didn't do quite a good, but the week before, they fishing a black spinnerbait. Now, this ain't big enough. They didn't have a, they put a number seven spinner fishing at night, black spinnerbait, or they're taking a jig with a weed guard and they're putting the spinners on it, okay? Just like you fish redfish, you put mm -hmm. a spinner on it. And they're catching them at night. On, on a jig. Now, another thing he, he, he warned me about or he told me about was that you better be careful where you're running right now and follow the boat roads because it is going down, it's being drawn down. And uh, so if you can go to Toledo Bend right now and then Sacolay, they still catch them at 25 foot of water. Uh, I got a picture, another picture from Ethan Garrett. He come in the store right now, he's still buying baits. Uh, Ethan keeps sending those pictures. Give me a little bit more information, and you better be thank God for your mama taking you around and taking care of you, boy, because she, she's spending that money on him. Uh, Diana, that's it. That's all I got. I, I can't find nothing else. 
Uh, Chris, a couple uh, little notes on hunting. Um, you know, Toby Cooper, you're looking at a nice buck he got up in the Angie area, bow hunting. And uh, I think we're going to see a little bit of a spike in the, in the deer take on, from bow hunters this week because of the weather. Not so much that it maybe gets the deer moving, which it does, but it allows people to stay on their stands longer when they're not hunting in the high humidity and the mosquitoes and the bugs. Also, we got the uh, youth hunt in the goose season just a couple of weeks away now. You need to make plans for that if you're going to participate in those. Uh, and, of course, all the small game is wide open now, squirrel, rabbit, and uh, basically it's, it's here. Fall hunting's we're ready to go. T yeah, and the Marpaw Wildlife uh, Management Area is open for deer hunting. It was hunting. closed because of the high water. It's reopened on uh, Marpaw WMA if you want to deer hunt. All right. That's it. All right. Send us your pictures of your fish, your deer, your ducks, whatever, who you are, where you are, and how you got them, and we'll put you right here on Paradise, Louisiana. Please remember, if you're using your cell phone, turn it horizontally. It fits the screen much, much better. And we'll see you again next week with another edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented... Paradise, Louisiana is presented... Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.